Now, the thing that I wanted to do today, and actually finish today, is to talk about implementing the efficient allocations in dynamic settings. And I think I will still have plenty of time to give you the, to introduce you to those. I also wanted to do an example, as you asked me to. I'm not sure if we'll have time for that, so we will see. Now, the problem of implementing the efficient allocation is just pretty much the same as it is in the static setting. We want to find an allocation, efficient allocation kappa star, that maximizes the discounted sum, the expected sum of the real utilities of all players. So sum over t's, sum over i's of the i's, discounted appropriately. And the expectation here is taken over probably over all profiles of player types. Right. The trick with finding this efficient allocation is it's much less trivial than it was in the static setting. So I guess even there our allocation could have been an arbitrary object that you know does not need to be a concave problem, does not need to have a unique well-defined solution, all the problems could arise. Now it not only can be a bad problem, it almost explicitly is a very inconvenient problem to solve. Partly because our allocation, kappa, is multidimensional by design. So it at least has one outcome for all um, periods. right? And we need to optimize over many variables at the same time. And the thing is, we cannot just optimize point-wise, right? We, we cannot set k to, in this period, it's best to select k equal to 1. In that period, it's best to select k equal to 5, and so on. We need to select a jointly optimal path of kt because of all the linkages, linkages that we saw. Because even if today I have a bid for a house equal to, I don't know, 1 million, I, it would be optimal for me to sell my house at 1 million, right? If, I just saw this as a static setting. It's better to get 1 million than to not get 1 million. But it affects the set of future feasible allocations for me. I will not have a house to sell tomorrow if a buyer with a 2 million valuation uh, arrives. So I must optimize over my decision today, see, keeping in mind what can happen tomorrow and what would be my optimal path of play tomorrow and so on. So, difficult dynamic problem. Yeah, because today's allocation KT may affect not only the set of alternatives, but also tomorrow's types. So, whether I give you a taste of heroin today will affect your preference for heroin tomorrow. Now, beyond that, even the allocation in every single period can, in principle, be multidimensional. So, can be... Uh, complicated object in itself. So finding k star is a difficult optimal control problem. One remark that we make here is that exposed efficiency is not really something that we can get in dynamic mechanisms. Meaning you cannot uh, live with zero regret kind of, in the dynamic setting. Because of course if I knew that tomorrow a buyer who is willing to pay 2 million for my house would arrive, I would have not sold it today for 1 million. But there is no way I could have had this knowledge. So this allocation is not really attainable conceptually. So the concept that we will look at is interim efficiency, meaning my allocation today should maximize the expected uh, sum of utilities of all players tomorrow. Hence the expectation. So now we can Think of how to do that. Suppose that we have found this efficient allocation kappa star. Again, not a trivial problem, but suppose we handled this. We are tired, we are exhausted, but we are happy because we did it. What do we do then? How do we implement it? How do we construct the transfers that support this efficient allocation? The answer in the static setting is that I really hope I managed to hammer in is VCG and variations, like generalized VCG. So how does VCG work? VCG pays to every player the externality that this player induces on everybody else's utilities. 
So player I must pay to the mechanism the difference between everybody else's welfare when we take player I into account and everybody else's welfare when we ignore player I. This is the externality that player I's existence induces into the mechanism. The big idea in dynamic setting will be pretty much the same. So we will try to work with the same externality. We will want to pay to every agent the same externality that they impose on everybody else. But again, the details will be more painful. So the exact details of the implementation are difficult. And the main problem is once again in these linkages, broadly speaking. The externality that player I imposes on everybody else does not need to materialize today, which means that we cannot simply look at the in the differences in today's welfare, into the in the sum of other players' utilities that they receive today. We need to look at the effect that the presence of player I today bears on the whole expected future welfare uh, of all other players. And at the same time, we would want to avoid double counting, so it's not distorted incentives. And this is exactly what is done in the dynamic pivot mechanism by Bergman and Bellinacki. So by the way, so all non-underlined references here are available in the survey. I did not bother to link them in the slides directly. So the way that the dynamic pivot mechanism works is as follows. You need to proceed in these four simple steps, as usual. Step one is you construct this flow social surplus, meaning within period, sum of all players' utilities. So just sum over i's of vi's for a given t. Then, given this kind of flow welfare measure, you calculate the total expected welfare from today onwards. So this big W is the, again, the maximum, so the expected welfare under the efficient allocation. But the max of today's um, social surplus, flow social surplus, and the expected welfare from tomorrow given the future types over which the expectation is taken, and the future set of feasible allocations, again, over which, in principle, the expectation is taken. So, this is the welfare that all players receive from this point onwards. And now you want to isolate player I's contribution to this welfare. So, let's denote I's marginal contribution as this MI, and it will be the difference between exactly this measure big W and this W minus I, which is constructed in the same way as K star minus I was constructed in static setting. So the definition is not on the slide, but W minus I is the same. It will be the it will be the sum of flow social surplus today and the expected welfare tomorrow under the allocation that does not maximize all players' welfare, but which only maximizes welfare of all players except for player I. Cool? You see what you mean? You see what I mean? I see what you mean? So to calculate this W minus I, you need to calculate K minus I. So you need to calculate this uh, efficient ignoring I allocation rule, kappa, which is the same difficult problem as calculating the efficient allocation itself. And you need, to, you need to do it for every player, I. So you need to solve N of those problems. But given K minus I, you can calculate this W minus I. A lot of difficult problems to solve in getting to the dynamic mechanism. Once you have this marginal contribution of player i, you again, you want to avoid double counting. 
So if I account for Johann's effect on everybody else today, but this effect uh, materializes in the future, then Johann's marginal contribution will be positive or negative today and tomorrow. So this, this difference between welfares will be will count the same effect in multiple periods. So we want to isolate the flow effect that today's contribution has uh, in particular. And the way we do this is once again we decompose this marginal contribution big MI in a recursive manner, meaning that we define small MI which would be the flow marginal contribution of player i, such that big mi today at time t equals the flow marginal contribution small mi at time t, plus discounted expected future marginal contribution starting tomorrow. And this will finally be the value that we will be looking for the value that we will be able to plug into our payment schedule. So we will say that player i at time t must pay their own uh, utility minus and receive their flow marginal contribution. So just to clarify, this differs slightly from the way we wrote it for BCG. The reason is, in VCG, we only took the sum of all other players' utilities. Here, with welfare, we take the sum of all players' utilities, always. So both in big W and in big W minus I. So player I will receive the marginal contribution to everyone's welfare, including himself. So we kind of need to subtract player i's own utility from the marginal contribution because player i will receive that in, in, kind of in real utility, so does not need to receive it in payments. Okay, and once we have done all that, we will be able to conclude how the dynamic pivot mechanism looks. So it will be given by the efficient allocation rule kappa star that we have computed previously, and by this payment scheme uh, rule composed of these PIT stars. So, once again, I want to emphasize yet again that player I will not simply pay the difference uh, in flow welfares, but rather we have to go through this long process of identifying players' flow marginal contribution, just to avoid all the issues that I've briefly outlined. And yeah, I've more or less gone through the allocation. So this is a crash course on how the efficient mechanism looks in dynamic setting. I know it's very difficult to grasp just from looking at it. Yeah, so the question is when we had VCG, wasn't it the problem that the payments were super high sometimes? With VCG less so, so the sometimes, yes, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of an, of an example. Yeah, yes, if you're pivotal in a public project, uh, then the VCG payments would be really high, right? Yeah. You would have to compensate everybody else for spoiling, or you would, you would need to have to receive a lot of money uh, if you are the reason the project is implemented. Yeah. So, yeah, that is an issue. The issue is not solved here in any way, shape, or form. The transfers are can still be huge, and not only that, but they can be huge in every period. Yeah. So, in dynamic settings, we are maybe just a, a little less sensitive to that issue, because we think, well, you know, the, those can average over time. If you have to pay a million today and then receive a million tomorrow, maybe those will kind of balance out. If you have static preferences, then you would have to pay every period. Not necessarily. If you have the same preferences, but everybody else's preferences yeah, change. Yeah. 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 So that too. I mean, yeah, true. If if you are dealing with the exact same static problem and the, there is no dynamic nature, of course, yeah. So there can be cases in which 
you would have huge transfers. But uh, we just have we have so many other problems to care about in yes. dynamic settings that this kind of leaks in comparison. We're not making the GVCG dynamic. It's, it's... Yeah. Well, the okay, good point. We are not. We are looking at the dynamic equivalent of VCG, but not the generalized VCG, right? Why? Why is that? The main difference between the two was that the generalized VCG guaranteed uh, IR, individual rationality constraint, that it, it guaranteed that players would be willing to participate in our mechanism. So bringing it to dynamic setting, it would give us a mechanism in which the players would be willing to participate in every period. But as I said, we, we kind of have a cheaper way out of that. We can have this uh, trick with the collateral at time zero, where we just sign a binding contract. And so we, this would bring, get us IR per period for free. So we do not care about guaranteeing players' participation in every period. We will at most be worrying about guaranteeing their participation at time zero. And for that, we do not maybe need that much in terms of VCG. So this is the last slide for today. And now let's try to do an example in the past, in the last 20 minutes. This is an example from the last year's homework. And you'll have a different problem in this year's homework. Uh, yeah, so in this problem, uh, it's about climate change. All right, so we have two generations only alive at uh, t equals to 1 and 2, respectively. And these generations basically choose how much they want to pollute, how much of the natural resources they want to use in their, during their lifetime. And they have some private valuations from that. And we are trying to design the, the efficient uh, mechanism. So we want to decide how much we want to limit our consumption today for the sake of future generations. So players are only alive at these uh, times. Players have types, theta i. They will just be persistent in this case. No? Uh, have some types. We will say that those are identically independently distributed, uniform 0, 1. Because we don't know any other distributions in this course. <laughs> Players utilities are given by the following. Player 1 with theta 1 and allocation k1. Is to theta 1 k1 minus k1 squared minus the payment p1. Player 2 oh, has utility that depends on theta 2, k1 and k2, and it's given by theta 2 k2 minus k1 plus k2 squared minus p2. So you can interpret this problem, these, these utilities as uh, theta as being the value of uh, the valuation for consuming natural resources. You know, how much do we need dirty energy today, as opposed to, for example, using clean energy. And the this negative square term is the cost of pollution, of smog in the air, of uh, dirty oceans, something like that. So the key linkage here is in the utility of the second player, because the second player suffers from past generations exploitation. K1 enters this cost. Now we will assume that the discount factor is equal to 1. So we do not discount the future, we treat both generations equally. So we are kind of circumvent circumventing the main debate in this in this uh, the main issue in this debate of how much should we value future generations against our own we'll just assume that we value everybody equally and we will try to devise the efficient allocation uh, using the dynamic pivot mechanism that we just introduced so 
usually write down the goal, so I'll write down the goal. Uh, design the efficient mechanism. So we solve this dynamic problem just like we solve any other than dynamic problem or many other dynamic problems. We do this by backwards induction. So we start from the end and we move backwards in time. So in our case, the final terminal point, the last generation that will ever live on Earth, is generation two in period number two. To calculate the efficient allocation of T uh, in period two, you could use all of those expressions, but there is a simpler way to see what's, what's going on and what we need to do. Namely, the mechanism deals with externalities that player has on other players from that point onwards. What externality does player 2 has on everybody else? None, right? Player 2 is the last one to live on Earth, so we should just let them do whatever they want. Follow the Earth as much as they want, uh, meaning that we can implement the, their optimal K, and we do not need any payments to do that. So, K to star will just be the maximizer of U, I guess this will be small U, U2 of theta 2K1, K2 over K2. And if you solve it, if you just take first order conditions, you will see that it's equal to theta 2 minus 2K1 over 2. Yeah, I guess this allocation depends on theta 2 and k1. And it's better to write things explicitly rather than imply them, so I fix that. And transfer, given theta 2 and k1, will just be 0. Because again, with this allocation rule, we do not really need to pay anything to the player. To, uh, for them to reveal their preferences truthfully. And this is, of course, not T, but P, payments to the mechanism. Okay, so this is period two. This was the easy part. Now comes the hard part of figuring out what to do for at period one. And that takes Total of two pages in the solutions. So we'll maybe do some of that, but probably not everything in the remaining 10 minutes. So first of all, what do we need to start with? What is our first step? Does anyone know? Just from the cookbook that we just considered. What is the first thing that we do with period one? Yeah, but to calculate welfare, we need to calculate something else first. Flow social surplus, and even before then, well, I guess flow social surplus, it's not really clear yet whether it depends on K or not. But uh, to calculate welfare, we need to calculate this, this maximizer, this uh, K. So we need to find K1 star. But maybe uh, doing maybe yeah let's let's actually start with the flow social surplus because it is for general k it does not depend on what um, it does not depend on the efficient k so flow social surplus small w of k one and theta one equals it equals just the real utility of player one. So theta 1k1 minus k theta 1k1 minus k1 squared. Good. 
the welfare function in period one, bw of theta one, and the set of feasible locations large kt. I will drop that in my notation because it's changing kt is not a part of the problem really. I will say that this is a maximum over k one in the real line. So we will allow both positive and negative k's just for convenience, otherwise transfers are painful. <clears throat> yeah, uh, max over k1 of this flow social surplus, theta1 k1 minus k1 squared. plus delta times the expected welfare in period two. The welfare in period two is just equal to flow social surplus in period two. So we need to find the expected W in period two, meaning the expected utility of the second player. The expectation will be taken with respect to theta two, second player's type. And this will look as follows. So expectation over theta 2 of theta 2 k2 minus k1 plus k2. And k2 will be the optimal location. We already know what it is. Theta 1 k1. Now oh, I need this here too, don't I? Theta 1 k1. OK. Sorry, it's, it's, it's a little small. Now we can plug in the K2 star that we have already found here. And we also know what the distribution of theta 2 will be. So we can calculate this welfare in closed form. But it will be a little long. So max over K1 of the real line of theta 1, K1 minus K1 squared plus I will plug the thing first so it will be theta 2 squared minus over 2 minus theta 2 k1 minus you see that k1 plus k2 star equals just theta 2 over 2 Theta 2 over 2 squared. These two terms cancel out. We're just left with minus theta 2 k1. So oh then there's square on the two. Yeah, right. Sorry. They do not cancel out perfectly. Yeah. So, but yeah, this will just be four. Yeah. So our welfare function at period one will be k one in the real line of theta one k one minus k one squared plus the expectation of theta 2 squared over 4 minus theta 2 k1. Now, let's try to calculate this expectation. So we'll calculate the expectations of the two terms separately. Expectation of theta 2 k1 will just be k1 times the expectation of theta 2, which is 1 half. So it will be k1 over 2. And the expectation of this, this should have been a 4. I said this, but I didn't write it. The expectation of this square will be given by 1 third over 4, so 1 12. And this is our welfare function in period 1. Now we can find the efficient allocation in period 1 k1 star of theta 1 
will be equal to the argmax of this expression. So it will be uh, the first order condition will be equal to theta 1 minus 2 k1 minus 1 over 2 equal to 0. So k1 will be equal to theta 1 over 2 minus 1 fourth. And I guess you can already see some of the idea of dynamic pivot mechanism. Player 1 does not affect anyone in period 1, but player 1 will affect player 2. So if we just maximize player 1's utility, we would have chosen theta 1 over 2. We can pretty much see this from that quadratic expression for the utility. But since we realize that player 1's consumption will harm player 2, we want to distort k1 downwards a little bit. We do not really know what theta 2 will be, but we take the expectation over theta 2. And we say that, well, on average, if you shade your consumption by one fourth, if you decrease it a little bit, that's good enough. That's the efficient thing to do. So, OK, we have computed welfare function. We have computed the efficient allocation. I guess we can now calculate the actual welfare, W of theta 1, by just plugging theta 1 in here. Uh, sorry, k1 star in there. Theta 1 squared over 2 minus theta 1 over 4 plus theta 1 squared over 4 minus theta 1 over 4 plus 1 over 16. No, wait. The signs are the opposite minus plus minus because it was minus k1 squared plus 1 over 12, minus k1 over 2, so minus theta 1 over 4, plus 1 eighth. Now you can reduce it. These two cancel out the constants a little bit. We get theta 1 squared over 4 minus theta 1 over 4 and uh, 1 16th plus 1 12th is yeah 1 fourth 1 third plus 1 fourth 7 over 12 7 over 48 so, okay, this is the welfare function, and we're out of time, so we'll more or less stop here, I guess, just before all of the interesting stuff. So, but just to speak once again through what you do then in this problem. We have calculated welfare W. Then you need to repeat this calculation, ignoring clear one. And you can already guess that then the k1, k star at t equal to 1, but ignoring minus, ignoring player 1, would be equal to 0. We do not want player 1 to do anything, because it will harm player 2. Uh, so that, you compute w minus i for period 1. You then calculate the marginal contributions. And you calculate payments in every period. So one, one thing about this uh, example that I want to tell you straight away, just in case you do actually solve it at home and you get answers, is that it is the mechanism will not be actually online. So the mechanism will prescribe that player 1 should pay something to the mechanism or get payments in the second period when player 1 is not actually alive. So the example is a little sketchy in that respect. Uh, yeah, but that's what the, the, that's what the dynamic pivot mechanism suggests. So you're welcome to finish that at home. And the next week, we will continue talking about dynamic mechanisms. And we will look at the other question that we have also looked at, dynamic optimal mechanisms.
we'll look at how we can maximize revenues. Thank you. I'll see you next week.